Hi, my name is Andrew Graf. I'm with the Video Navigation Lab at UT Austin, and today I will be discussing purposeful OFDM co-design for ranging and communications. So what do I mean when I say purposeful co-design? Well, currently we're seeing an incredibly high demand for precise positioning. However, many of those applications are turning to using OFDM-based communication networks to meet their positioning needs. However, the positioning protocols within these standards are a bit restrictive and were designed as more of an afterthought or secondary priority to communications data rate. So we're interested in the problem of how can we design and evaluate new OFDM systems for both ranging and communications. Now, this is very interesting because a lot of these applications have a unique opportunity to extend beyond the current standards. And these include low earth orbit satellites, aerospace, 6G cellular, V2X, and industrial automation. Secondly, we're very much interested in understanding the fundamental trade-offs between P&T and comms. Is it a zero-sum game or can both come out ahead? So to perform this analysis, we want to look at the fundamental bounds of the signal itself rather than doing Monte Carlo simulations, which can waste a lot of computational resources if we want to try all possibilities. So we can come up with a candidate signal with you know, an arbitrary parameter set, including the pilot placement, the pilot power allocation, the subcarrier spacing, et cetera. And then assuming a propagation environment, we can determine the channel estimation error and then plug it into our capacity bound, the channel capacity bound for our particular fading distribution. Similarly for ranging, we can take our candidate signal and compute the autocorrelation function, which we plug into the zip Sakai bound. And this will give us a bound on the time of arrival error and therefore the ranging error that we can experience. Now it's important to use the zip Sakai bound instead of the Kramer Rao bound because the zip Sakai bound captures a unique thresholding effect that occurs at low SNRs. So what can we do with this analysis? Well, here we can compare two candidate signals. The first on the left is our equally spaced pilot signal, and the one on the right only has two pilots placed into the two outermost subcarriers, but with the same power budget. And this design maximizes the mean squared bandwidth. So looking at the performance, the mean squared bandwidth maximizing signal performs best when there's no multipath, but as soon as multipath is introduced, its performance degrades very quickly. So similarly for ranging, we can compare those two same signals. Now, a unique property of this mean squared bandwidth maximizing signal is that traditional PNT knowledge would tell you that maximizing the mean squared bandwidth gives you the best time of arrival performance. However, that's not the case in what we see here. And here for our SNR range, the equally spaced pilot signal always outperforms. And that's because maximizing your mean squared bandwidth doesn't really give you any benefit until you reach very extreme, very extremely high SNRs. And you can also see, visualize the hump that occurs at low SNRs. And that's that thresholding effect that I was discussing earlier. So the most interesting analysis that you can do with this study is directly plotting the trade-off between capacity and ranging error. So here we varied the pilot spacing and the pilot power allocation. And this allows you to determine the Pareto optimal parameter set you want to use and how tuning these can increase your ranging performance while still meeting certain capacity requirements. You know, one example is if we have a strict rate requirement, we can determine, hey, having pilots every four subcarriers is the optimal. And we can determine what the power budget needs to be to meet that. So we have many unique takeaways from the study. The first is that maximizing your mean squared bandwidth is not always the best for PNT, and especially not for comms when multipath is present. Secondly, the Kramer Rao bound does not capture the full story and it misses an important thresholding effect that can occur at low SNRs. And third is looking at those Pareto curves, we have intricate relationships between the parameters to tune and it gives us an opportunity to increase ranging performance with little cost to our data rate. So thank you for listening to my presentation. And of course, you can always contact me with more questions at the email below.